I'm Simon Dewsbury, PGA Staff Professional here at Belmont Country Club. We're continuing our look at each hole on the golf course. Right now we're going to look at hole 14. We're at a point in the golf course where we begin to lose our focus, so this is going to be real key to make sure that we do maintain our focus as much as possible. We don't want to destroy our score on this hole particularly. Semi-blind tee shot with a hole that's got water all around the backside of it. So we really want to make sure we're in a good position as we walk to 15 tee. Let's go. We're on 14T now, um, we've talked about it on 13, but if you haven't seen that video yet, I'm going to go through it again briefly now. We're at a point in the round where we're probably going to begin to see a drop off in energy levels, physically and mentally. So we want to make sure that we're fueling our bodies and because of that, the mental capabilities as we go a little bit further around. So if we start eating on 13, now on 14, the body's going to begin to process this kind of food for us so we've got the energy store on 15, 16, 17 when we really need it. A little bag of trail mix, not obviously all of this it would be ideal, but uh, banana, apple, granola bar, it's something that we want to make sure that we have so we're fueling our bodies the right way. We don't realistically want to be loading ourselves up with a load of sugar from donuts or um, anything else that we might get from the beverage cart. We want to make sure we're putting the right fuel into our bodies to keep us effective as we're playing. A lot of water as well. Um, you can get energy tablets that can go into to that as well to make it a little bit more flavorful. But using that to your benefit rather than trying to fight your own fatigue as you're going through these next stretch of holes is going to be key to keeping your score going. Playing this hole in and of itself though, um, Straight away par 4, 411 yards off the gold tees down to 303. No fairway bunkers really to contend with here. Um, I think there used to be one down the left hand side but that was taken out. But no penalty areas on the left or right either. It is just straight out of bounds. So the tee shot is going to be crucial making sure that we get the ball into play and then playing our approach shot into a green which, which does jut out a little bit into a peninsula peninsula um, with water down the right hand side and around the back so pin location is going to be important if we can find the left or right half of the fairway to, to ease our shot into the green um, but making sure that we pick our line and trusting our swing off the tee is going to be crucial. Okay, so we've got a big T here. <clears throat> Again, I want to try and feel my shot out. I want to try and play a little draw. I'm going to start it off on the chimney stack of the house behind the hole and work it around a little bit right to left. So again, easy swing for my practice swings, just trying to feel the movements of my swing so I can get it working around. Pick where I want to start it, pick where I want the ball to finish. And on the chimney. As we move forwards, there's about 20 yards difference between the golds and the blues. Realistically, the, the viewpoint is still the same. I've just lost a little bit in elevation, but I'm still picking out that chimney stack as my target where I want to start. It does drift a little bit around to the left as a whole, so a slight draw off that, that target point or maybe off the big tree that I can see in front of me would be the ideal start line and just let it drift around towards the green a little bit from that point. But really, really simple, straightforward tee shot, not much there to scare me off the tee. 
as we move in forwards now to the whites, this is where things are going to change a little bit. As we move up now, <clears throat> we're onto the white tees. We've lost even more height in terms of the elevation points from gold to blue to white. So my visuals here are a lot different. We're a little bit further to the left as well. So my aiming point is going to change slightly. Instead of looking at the tree or the chimney stack, I'm probably going to look at the, the two cars or the, the left edge of that house behind the, behind the green on the other side of the lake as my, my viewpoint and my aiming point to start the ball off. But it, it's, it's much more of a semi-blind tee shot as well. I can only see about 30, 40 yards of fairway before it goes over the crest. So as it goes over, I hit a little bit of a speed slot and that can help me to kick the ball forwards. So driver may not necessarily be the right shot if we're a little bit uncomfortable in keeping it in play. Use a more lofted fairway wood. That speed slot is still gonna help us to kick the ball forwards. But getting the ball in play on this hole is really gonna be key. 342 from here. So not a particularly long hole. Let's get it out there with something that's going to make sure we get it into play. Could be driver, could be fairway wood, but use that speed slot in the fairway to, to your advantage and kick the ball down no matter what you're going to use. As we now move up, we've got the green and the forward tees up on the same blocks. All right, as we move forward now, we're up onto the green tees and the red tees. They're sharing the same box here but we've, mu we've drifted over a lot further to the right-hand side now, just short of the fairway. So it really is kind of a straight shot at the flag. We can actually see the green from here and it, it bowls in from the left-hand side. So if we are gonna favor one side of the fairway, I would favor the left-hand side. From the tees further back, we talked about using the chimney stack that you can actually see. It's a brick chimney stack that runs straight up the middle of the house. The viewpoint from here, I would still use the chimney stack, but it would be the, the chimney stack that's, co that's um, color coded the same as the exterior of the house. So it's kind of a gray brown exterior and it's straight over the flag. So that would be where I would want to start if I'm playing from here. And then hopefully just a little draw from that flag into the left hand side of the fairway, because it is going to then drift down the hill back into the middle of the fairway once the ball has landed whether that's from the green tees or from the, the forward tees, the red tees, I'm still in that same mentality. I want to kind of get the ball down that left-hand side and let the, the slope kick the ball forwards, but also that left to right slope, move the ball into the middle of the fairway for me. So we're in the middle of the fairway. We hit a really good tee shot, but as we've alluded to on 13 and on, now on 14, we're at that point where our focus might begin to drift as our energy levels are dropping. Um, hopefully by eating the snacks, the granola bar, the trail mix, and keeping our fluid levels up, we're not gonna have too much of a mental block as we begin to go into the final stretch of holes. But having a pre-shot routine that's geared to, to make you have that on-off switch in your brain turn on at the right time is really key. So I've got myself next to the 150 marker here. I'm about 12, 13 paces away from the golf ball. At this point for me, that little rip of the Velcro is my key um, audibly to kind of switch my brain back into golf mode. So I've stopped talking to my playing partners. I'm now focused on what's ahead of me. Where's the wind? I'm pacing off as well. What my distance is from the yardage marker so that I can then get my, my yardage book out and find out what my, my pin location is for distance and also where it is in terms of the slopes on the green. But all of that is being processed really, really quickly so that I can then step up over it. I can feel my shot. I can get the club that I want out of the bag to then play it. And this is a nice, easy little knockdown shot keep it out of the little bit of a, a breeze that we've got into our face. And then all I've got to do, that little rip again, that's the key to me that I can relax, I can turn the brain off from focusing on my shot. 
So I'm saving my mental processing for when I really need it, which for me now is going to be my put on the green. All right, we tried to play it up the left-hand side and we've ended up just a little bit further left than we wanted and the, the rough has caught the ball. As you can see here now, the golf ball really sitting down a lot. So we're gonna have a little bit more difficulty in controlling what happens to the ball as it comes out. If the flag was tucked on that left-hand side, although there's no bunker over there, that's going to give me a really big problem going at that flag because I don't know if the ball's going to float out or whether it could get a little bit of a flyer and shoot out past the green. So my, my better option is going to be to aim kind of pretty much where the flag is actually positioned today towards the middle of the green but with my bailout area being short so that I'm actually still in the fairway give myself an easy little chip shot to come into that back left corner. If the flag was up on the right hand side, obviously I don't want to drift to the right because that's going to bring the water into play. So at that point I would be aiming much more towards the middle of the green and accepting my, that I can't really attack a flag. Where that flag is today though, I'd feel like I could try and take that one on a little bit. So there you go. Solid strike, but a lot of grass between the club face and the ball, so the ball didn't come out as hot as I expected it to. And it's about 10 yards short of the green, but in the fairway, giving myself a really easy chance to play a little chip shot. If we find ourselves in this position where we're just behind the, the control box for the sprinkler systems here, that's in a direct line between me and the flag. So that is going to interfere with the, the line of play and where the golf ball is going to go. So I've got to look at what my options are for getting relief. It is a man-made obstruction and obviously it's fixed into the ground. So that is immovable. So I've got to find out where my nearest point of relief is going to be. So looking at me here, it's only going to be about two feet or so to the left of that control box. And then I'm gonna get one club length relief from there. Now I've gotta make sure that when I'm measuring this out, I'm not going any closer to the hole. But that now becomes my drop zone. And the last thing I would do is just mark the ball as well. So I've got a reference point as to where that was and making sure now I'm definitely behind it. So when I come in and drop, I'm not going in front of that point and I'm still within my one club length and now I've got room to play and that control box doesn't come into play anymore. All right, so there we had it. We were, if we were in the rough, we had to lay up, played a little chip shot on. The way that this whole location is today, it's not the easiest to get close to. Um, it's just beginning to get into a little bit of a shoulder, so it could kick left or right. This one, when it landed, kicked right, but hopefully the camera picked up that we did still land it on the green. That's gonna be key to this shot, making sure that when we hit this shot, we do have the best understanding of how the golf ball is going to react when it lands. If I land just a little bit short, particularly on this hole, because we've got so much water nearby, it does tend to hold a little bit more water and the ground is a little softer. So I don't really know how the ball would react if it landed in the fringe. We do want to try and make sure we land on the green so we've got an idea as to how it might release. I got my distance right 
I was just ever so slightly off on my direction, but a four foot putt now to save my par gives me a really good chance of keeping my score going. So in terms of looking at this short putt, again, most people would have a tendency of just getting kind of tunnel vision and looking straight down that line, but that doesn't give us the full viewpoint. We can really get sucked into a false sense of security at that point there. Make sure we look out to the peripheries. So the green itself is sloping back to front. It, you would think that the ball goes this way and, and breaks towards the front edge of the green. But we've got a little bit of a shoulder here coming off this mound at the very front that kicks in to this pin location. And this is the overriding factor that takes the ball. That put there is actually just left of the pin for its start line. It's gonna actually break to the right. It's gonna break what feels like uphill, but in reality, because of this, this little mound here pushing, it's, it's breaking down this little hill, and this little slope here. So just left of the flag. and let it move with the slope then into the middle of the hole. All right, with the real shot coming from the fairway again, we've got to make sure that we're repairing the pitch mark where the ball landed. One of the most annoying things in golf when people don't do that and then mark it to clean it because I need a clean golf ball if it's going to roll properly and then I'm going to go through my routine and have a look at it from the sides step back as well make sure that you've got a really good viewpoint of it all so it's clearly easy to see that this one's coming uphill but then right at the end it just begins to crest and start to go away from me right at the end of this putt This one's my most important viewpoint again. So I see that this shoulder here is just kicking in. It's gonna go that way towards the middle of the green. And although I'm gonna have to move it, it looks like it's on the right edge of where that leaf was. Line myself up. Same routine every time. Slightly right to left, easy birdie putt. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you get all the alerts for when we post new videos. Also, leave us some comments on what you like, what you don't like, and anything that you want to see going forward. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.